Hi, welcome to this latest demo showing just how easy it is to start developing, building and running microservices on the public cloud. This is a very brief introduction to highlight the awesome new Fabricate integration that the folks over at Statpoint.io have added when creating new Kubernetes clusters. For anyone that's not familiar with Statpoint, they are by far the easiest way to get up and running with Kubernetes on the public cloud, using providers such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Packet and DigitalOcean. Okay, so we'll start at statpoint.io. It's a web-based UI, and you can see they've added a shiny new Fabricate icon to their homepage. If we go ahead and select this, we can log in using our Google, Google credentials and be taken to the, uh, to the Create Clusters page. So I've already uploaded my AWS key set, and I can edit the initial VM size, the sizes of the VMs. For the master, I'll probably have a M3 large and for the workers, uh, M3 extra large. You could probably use large, but if you want to run centralized logs and metrics and have multiple, multiple app microservices, and you probably want something larger. So we're going to default to um, Kubernetes 144, core OS, using the Stackpoint HA proxy, as well as our Fabricate solution that's been added. Once we continue, we're going to get taken to our cl uh, cluster list page. This is a nice dashboard where we can actually add more clusters to, um, to using Stackpoint. So we're going to take through, for demo purposes, it's been sped up slightly. We're going to build, provision, and then install um, our cluster on AWS. So if we wanted to interact with Kubernetes, then we'd use uh, from the C from a command line interface, then you'd use this kubeconfig file, you, as well as the quick start guide steps above. Everything from this demo, however, we're gonna do from the consoles. If we go into our cluster now, we can see that we've chosen Amazon Web Services, we've got our distribution and our solutions running. We've got a master, two workers nodes as well. And it's nice and easy for us to be able to add more nodes when we need it. We've got this extra solution that's running. We can see this plus one here. And down there, we've got the Fabricate console endpoint that's, that's running. Now, this is using XIP out of the box uh, for wildcard DNS. You probably want to use your own DNS provider, um, which is all configurable once we actually get into Fabricate. So, the Fabricate console, we can see that we've got our namespaces. So this is our environments that are running at the bottom. We've also got an out-of-the-box team that's been created. Running in there, at the top there, we can see a, a config map controller. This is for applications that want to be able to automatically restart if their configuration is changed. Um, we've got an expose controller, so we can automatically expose ingress rules or OpenShift routes or even no ports, depending on if we're developing locally or on the public cloud. We've also got a Docker registry, a Fabricate Forge for a wizard, Git hosting, Jenkins, and Nexus server as well. If we're going to be because we're going to be Java, building some Java applications, we have a nice toolbox here that we can actually skip through to each of the consoles of, of, of those as well. Here we can see a selection of the one-click runnable applications that Fabricate comes with out of the box as well. The developer console that we're looking at has breadcrumbs along the top. So for nice, easy navigation around, we also have the uh, Kubernetes resources that we can view on the left-hand side. We can see our services and deployments. We can edit configuration here. This is where we would be adding in a, our custom domain um, in the exposed controller. We also have pods, replica sets, events, and secrets. You can see, uh, view from a developer point of view, develop, uh, see what's going on within our cluster. So we currently have out of the box everything running that we need to be able to build and develop software. So we can either import or choose to use the internal GOGS repository. We're going to create a project. We have a selection of quick starts where we can use .NET, Python, um, Golang, Spring Boot, Node.js, lots of different types of applications. I think we have around 43 uh, already. Um, we can choose our new micro application. This is just a Java application under the hood using Spring Boot. 
Next, we get taken to select which pipeline we're going to use. These are our Jenkins 2 pipelines. These are our Jenkins file that get added to our source code repositories that we're going to, that's going to be created by the wizard. We can see here, we're going to select a canary release, a stage, prove and promote, which is going to use some default environments of testing, staging, and production. These again are all configurable. They just come out of the box for nice defaults. If we, want, if we were running any of the chat apps or the um, project management, then we could automatically create these uh, channels and projects. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and continue. Again, we're going to speed this up real quick. We, there's plenty of other demos out there to show in more depth using um, pipeline charting as well and out of the box eventing that we can actually see. But as this is the first run, the Nexus repository that we're using doesn't have any artifacts. So it's going to go and download a lot of these jars. Um, we're also going to use the Fabricate Maven plugin to be able to build a Docker image and also generate all the resources needed to run this application on Kubernetes. As it's a jar, one of our Java quick starts, we've also added a automatically added a integration test that checks the liveness and readiness checks for this application when it's deployed in a testing environment. This gives us good understanding if this application is, is running and it's a good test to start with, which is totally extendable. Because of the pipeline that we selected, which again is customizable, then it was providing this integration test passes, it will automatically deploy to a staging environment. Bear in mind, we are automatically creating these environments very um, on demand. This gives us a nice isolation within our teams. We can see we've got our pipelines on the left hand, we can left hand menu. We've also got our source tab that we can see our Java code and it was not provides us a nice wiki that we could edit it. Because it's been deployed into our staging environment, we can see we can access the application, the quick start that was running, and we're waiting for approval. Once we proceed, then it will be deployed into our production environment. As I said, this is a real quick introduction. Uh, there's plenty more demos and blogs out there. Um, we encourage you to try it yourself and using Stackpoint.io to get up and running quickly. Thank you.